The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning. Um, so it looks like we do have one person attending. So before we get started, we just want to make sure that you can hear me. Okay, so if you can hear me, you can raise your hand. That lets me know that our audio is working. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Um, welcome and thank you for attending the Colorado Office of Audiology Licensure's stakeholder meeting via webinar today. It is March 29th, 2022, and the time is 9.30 a.m. Um, before we get started, we would like to introduce the staff members from the Division of Professions and Occupations that are present. Um, my name is Darcy Magnus, and I'm a regulatory analyst with the division, and I am the only one facilitating the stakeholder meeting this morning. Um, due to concerns regarding surrounding COVID-19, the division has transitioned to a platform that is 100% virtual and we appreciate your flexibility. As you may or may not have attended DORA stakeholder meetings before, we would like to emphasize the importance of your comments today. DORA makes decisions every day that may affect your life and your business, so your input is vital in the rulemaking process. Throughout this process, our goal is to create regulations that clarify and explain legislation, ensure minimum competency to enter and continue to practice, and provide only what is absolutely necessary without create necessary for consumer protection without creating unnecessary barriers to the marketplace. Your input will be part of the information that goes to the director as the director considers whether to adopt the proposed revisions to rule 1.3 in compliance with section 1220203 of the Colorado Revised Statutes, which allows licensees the ability to change the status of their license, license to inactive. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the program's website by the close of business on Monday, April 4th. As the stakeholder meeting is held solely by webinar, please raise your hand using the hand icon if you would like to speak and we will unmute your live so you'll be heard by everyone. Or you can type your comment in the question section and we will read it aloud. Before we start taking comments, we wanna ask that anyone providing comments, please state your name and the name of the organization you represent, if any. Feel free to provide either general comments. Hold on one second. My apologies for the background noise. Feel free to provide either general comments on the rule changes or specific comments on the proposed language. Please limit your comments to no more than three to five minutes and try not to repeat something that was already said. Stating you're in full agreement with someone else works just fine and will be noted. If you are using audio through your computer, please remember to put any phones on vibrate or turn them off. And whether you are using computer or phone audio, try to keep background noises to a minimum when speaking. So at this point in time, um, I will show the proposed changes on my screen, and then we'll start taking comments if anyone has any. Okay, so hopefully you can um, see my screen now. So basically the proposed changes are to add into the rules um, of react reactivation rules if someone chooses to go inactive how that person would reactivate a license um when you can see the proposed additions there so we did have some questions on the side of the rules as well um posed in comments that we were hoping to get stakeholder feedback about um, and we used another director model program as an example for um, these rules. So if anyone has any comments um, or questions, now is your opportunity to raise those um, so we can get feedback from you regarding these proposed additions to the audiology rules. All right, George Sire, I have unmuted you. You're self-muted. There. Yeah. 
My name is George Sear. I'm a license holder in Colorado representing myself. Uh, this is my first time to one of these sessions. Thank you very much for facilitating this. Uh, my question was, is, was this uh, proposed rule uh, implemented or considered based on request from other license holders or is this considered just an enhancement based on other professions that Dora uh, oversees? Good question. So, and my apologies for mispronouncing your name. Um, the reason for this is to the statute allows all licensees to go inactive. Um, so it's to align the rules with the statute and make sure that licensees know how to, once you choose to go inactive, how you can reactivate your license. Does that make sense? It absolutely does make sense. Thank you for the clarification point. One follow-up question. I think I read through it as you were scrolling through. When one elects to go inactive, if this is in fact approved uh, and adopted, uh, that would suspend your need for continuing education during the inactivity period. But then what happens when you go active again? Do you have to do any kind of uh, continuing education work or further work to reactivate your license? That's a good question, and that's what is being um, decided here. So it talks about what you have you can do to reactivate. Um, so application proof in a manner just prescribed by the director that the licenses, registrations, or certifications held in other states are in good standing, and attesting that you'll maintain malpractice and demonstrating compliance with the continuing education requirements pursuant to the statute. So the question is, should that be more specific? Um, is that confusing? We used, like I said, we use language from another, we call them director model programs. So we use language from occupational therapists. It's another healthcare program. Um, but really that's up to, up to stakeholders to provide feedback to us, um, as to what works or makes sense for, for you and your profession. So if you have any thoughts on that, if it's not clear or you want more guidance, um, please let us know. The, uh, the 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 question I mean the uh, issue is submitting proof in a manner prescribed by the director that the license registrations and certifications held in other states or jurisdictions are in good standing. Uh, and then what else do we have to do? Uh, okay, malpractice and uh, so it says demonstrating compliance. I, I guess I'm confused because if you're inactive, and that would mean you really would have to continue to continue your education so that you could prove that you were competent when you reactivated your license. Is that why I'm reading this properly? So you, it, just, it also depends on how long you're inactive. So I think that um, here I put into the comments, I don't know if this is helpful, if you can see them. So just as another example of what uh, the mental health boards do. Okay. So you can see here um, license inactive for more than two years. And then there's criteria. I'll pop it open so you can see it better. Criteria for what... Um, a licensee would have to prove to prove competency to reactivate um, and they give some op options there so you i'm not gonna i don't know if you can see those okay um so yes, that would be another another option to put something some language like that into these rules um so because they give you the option of doing an additional 10 professional development hours as defined in board rule for each year or portion thereof that the license has been inactive that sounds that sounds reasonable, and uh, I the only other question I had pursuant to this endeavor is, is there going to be a time frame, a, a maximum time of inactivity before reactivation, or is that going to be open ended? That again is up to. There's no no decision has been made on that. Um, what are your thoughts? Do you think that it should be limited? Yeah, my belief would be that it's limited. I'm speaking in terms of. Uh, my experience having been licensed in other states and also I sat on the licensure board in the state of Texas for eight years before I moved to Colorado and we had no inactivity clause in this so you simply had to maintain your license and if you went active you had to reapply and go through the whole gyration of being recredentialed by the licensure board so this is kind of new to me I think that if you did it uh, so that did they exceed a period of potentially five to ten years I, I i think anything beyond that would be a little bit much in my mind okay okay that's helpful 
All right. Anything else? No, I'm surprised. And I did I understand you say I'm the only participant that came on to this thing? We had one other person join, yes. So oh, as of right now, that you're you're one of two. Okay, great. <laughs> so I Thank appreciate you. you hopping on. Thank you. And hi, Susanna, it's nice to see you. Did you have anything that um, you wanted to add? Okay, so I think I'll just pause um, for another minute or so in case, in case Suzanne wants to say anything. Um, and then if, if not, I'll go ahead and wrap up after that. Awesome, okay, thank you. Alrighty, so I will go ahead and wrap up. I see you have your hand raised again. You're unmuted on my end, so we should be able to hear you if you wanted to say anything um, else. I did have one final uh, inquiry. Uh, have you received any written comments? I know that this has been opened, or was this the first opportunity for license holders or stakeholders to comment? So we did, um, when we sent out the meeting notice for today's meeting, we sent that out on March 11th. Um, and we have not, that I'm aware of, I'm looking in the file right now, I don't see that we've received any written comments. And there have been no comments from the professional organization within the state. There's no uh, position paper or position that uh, the Academy of Audiology has on this. We have not received anything. Um, I, I'll double check that because we, we save them in the file and then we do post them on the website as well. Um, I'm not seeing anything saved in the file, but that could mean that maybe we received it in the email and we haven't saved it in the file yet, but I, I don't believe that we have received any comments. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. I found this was useful and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me go ahead and wrap up. Let you know next steps. Suzanne, I see your hand is raised. You're unmuted on my end now. I'm in my car. I hope it doesn't create feedback. Um, thank you, doctor, for participating on this call. Um, I represent the Colorado Academy of Audiology, and you got to our questions prior to me, so thank you. Um, and aside from that, we have no outstanding issues. Uh, thank you, Suzanne. Are you going to provide any written comments or do you have any suggestions on different language in the rule? Uh, we did not note anything that we had trouble with, but I'm happy to um, put something together formally if you would like. Yeah, I mean, I guess the really the biggest thing is how do we like what what clarification would you need on reactivation? I know that that's kind of like I said, it, it was open ended, um, but we just want to make sure that we're including whatever comments that you might have um, into the director's consideration. So. OK, great. I will get, put something together and get it over to you. What deadline do you have for written material? Um, so the rulemaking hearing will be May 3rd, 2022. So, and ideally it would sooner rather than later, but that's the, the date of the rulemaking hearing. So, um, there's still some time. I know you're busy right now. <laughs> it's a bad time of year for you. <laughs> it is that time of year, but I will make it a priority and, um, get it over to you. And, and again, I want to thank the doctor. I, I couldn't get the pronunciation of the last name, but, um, 
we um, are in agreement with his comment. Okay, great. Excellent. Well, thank you. Alrighty, so to wrap up, um, thank you for attending today's meeting. As mentioned, the rulemaking hearing will be on May 3rd, 2022, and at that hearing, stakeholders will have a final opportunity to provide comments and or testimony. Um, all comments and program recommendations will be provided to the director for review before the director considers permanent adoption of the rules. That concludes this stakeholder meeting. Um, thank you again for your participation. And as a reminder, if you have um, any written comments that you'd like to submit, those can be submitted to the rulemaking inbox that I mentioned. It was listed on the um, notice for today's meeting, but it's Dora underscore DPO underscore rulemaking at state.co.us. So uh, thank you again, and I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar now.